Hi everyone. This is a demo of the COVID-19 facility readiness and supply tracking application. This application was built using the open source platform Comcare and is available to be freely used and adapted. The application was designed to reflect the World Health Organization's essential resource planning guidelines to enable COVID-19 health facility assessments for healthcare facilities based on the World Health Organization's hospital readiness checklist for COVID-19. This application contains the following workflows. Registration of facilities, tracking of critical stock and supplies, which includes predicting usage and the number of days of remaining stock, tracking of facility readiness and planning, generating a report to notify of any urgent stock need, and to generate a report that notifies of a resource oversupply. Firstly, we're going to log in as a user. This is the application home screen. Each of the icons here represents the workflows we just discussed. To begin this workflow, we're going to register a facility. We've now entered the facility registration form. Here we're going to register a facility called the City Hospital. we're going to say that this facility is managed by a government organization. The facility location we're going to describe as Cape Town, South Africa. We have a question that asks, are we currently at the facility? For the sake of this demo, we're going to say yes. And it now allows us to capture the GPS location. The GPS location is captured in latitude, longitude, and allows you to see the accuracy of the position that we captured. Here we want to capture the primary contact at this facility. In this case, we're going to say it's Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith's phone number, we can say, is listed here. And their role at the facility is a chief medical officer. Next, we can capture a secondary contact at the facility. In this case, we're going to say it's Hannah Brown. And again, capture a phone number for Hannah Brown. Hannah Brown's role at this facility is the chief nursing officer. Next, we're going to capture the total number of ICU beds. Here we can say there are 10 ICU beds available. Uh, and this facility has 150 non-ICU beds. The number of staff employed at the facility, we can say that there are 10 doctors employed, 15 clinical officers, 20 nurses, 15 midwives, 20 health assistants, five laboratory technicians, and 12 community healthcare workers. This is the end of the very brief registration form uh, that now allows us to continue with this workflow. I will now submit this form and we can continue on with the facility tracking. Now that we've successfully registered this facility, we're gonna begin by updating the critical facility stock. When we select this icon, it shows up our case list with our new facility that we just registered and the primary contact name and phone number. This is to assist the user in quickly identifying a facility if they oversee multiple. When we enter this form, we're asked if we want to see alerts for stock quantities. We're going to say yes. It asks us if we want to see these alerts for all items or just items below a certain threshold. In this case, we're going to choose the threshold. Here, we get to choose what threshold we want to set for these items and we're going to say we want to be notified about items that will run out of stock in five days. We now select which items to apply this threshold to. We can now apply it to either all of the items or only select critical items. In this case, we're interested in surgical gloves, face shields, and surgical masks. We can now add in the stock take date in case that wasn't today. 
here we're going to say that this stock take date was two days ago. I'm going to go through this quickly just to show you what content has been built in. This content is intended to be adaptable to organizations involved in COVID-19 response. So this may change depending on your workflow. For these to rush through it, I'm going to put in, we have 100 gloves in stock, 100 surgical gloves, 100 goggles, 100 face shields. We are unsure about respiratory masks, so we can say they're zero for now. We can add in, we have 100 surgical masks left in stock. Uh, screening tests, we have 10. Here we are able to update the number of available ICU beds. So in this case, we can say of the 10 that we previously recorded, five of them are still open. Again, it confirms whether the total number of ICU beds may have changed. We can say that they've remained 10. The total number of non-ICU uh, hospital beds, we can say that there are 50 that are open of the 150 that we had previously recorded. Um, this is the end of this form. Uh, and this will now update the stock values. Now that we've completed our initial stock take, we can return to this form and say that another stock take was done later in the day. When we return to the form, it asks us to review our previous threshold that we had set and the items that we had set it for. In this case, we don't want to change this and we want to stick with that. We're going to say that the date of the stock take was today uh, and you will assess the stock on hand. So we can say that the number of examination gloves changed to 80. The same for surgical gloves. Protective goggles, we can say there are 90 still. Face shields, we can say has dropped down to 70. And here, when we add in 70, we can see that we've exceeded our threshold and it notifies us that we have five days of stock. If we change this stock down and we say that we only have 60, uh, it calculates down that at that usage rate, we have three days left of stock. We can continue on and we can say that we had put in zero particle respirators. Uh, they're still zero in stock. Surgical masks, we can say again that this number has changed. We're down to 40. And this alerts us that we are into one day's worth of stock remaining. We would continue on and complete the stock list. But for the sake of this demo and to save some time, I will not complete this form. While completing the most recent critical facility stock take, we realized that we had a short supply of surgical masks with only one day's supply remaining. The next step in this application would be to report an urgent need. Once we enter this form, we can see the types of equipment that we can request. For this, we're going to say that we're looking at personal protective equipment. We scroll down until we find surgical masks, and we can say that we are looking for 2,000 surgical masks. Since we are about to run out of stock in one day, we're going to say that this request is immediate. After this, we'll submit the form and it'll be sent to the managing authority to assess the need. In a very similar way, if while completing the critical facility stock, it is noted that there is a large oversupply of a resource, the, re the report resource oversupply form can be submitted. This works in a very similar way to the report an urgent need. We can say that in this case we have uh, an oversupply of diagnostic equipment, and we can say that we have too many extraction kits. We can say that there is an oversupply of 200 kits that could be reallocated to another facility. We'll select OK, and we can finish this form, and it will be submitted to the managing authority. Now that we've completed updating the critical facility stock, we're going to focus on the facility planning and readiness form. This form allows the user to assess the preparedness of a facility in the sections that mirror the WHO hospital preparedness checklist. In this case, we're going to capture what date we're entering the information. 
If this information was captured yesterday, we can change the date to that day. We're going to say that we want to capture information about the sections of human resources and isolation. Again, all these checklists can be adapted to suit the needs of your organization or facility type and specialization. Here we see the checklists for human resources. We can choose that we've identified a focal person, we've identified roles and responsibilities, and every staff member has received information about COVID. Some of these might not have yet been completed, so we'll say that they're partially complete or not complete at all. This scores each of these checklists, one for complete, 0.5 for partially complete, and zero for no, allowing you to report on the preparedness by each specialization area. Once we've completed the human resources checklist, we can go on to the isolation checklist. Again, these are specialized questions and can be adapted. Here we can say that a number of them are partially done and some are completed. By submitting this form, it will now be sent to the managing authority where they can assess the preparedness of this facility and this report can be completed again in the future if necessary. Finally, just some reminders. Firstly, please note that this application is structured on the COVID-19 World Health Organization protocols and documentation. Secondly, organizations can easily modify all application content using Comcare's turnkey application builder. Thirdly, for additional documentation and instructions on how to download a copy of this template application, please visit www.damagi.com slash COVID-19.